G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and today we are continuing a new series that I've got going where I uh, profile each individual AFL club and look at what their team might look like in three years from now. Uh, now I've done the Bulldogs and the Eagles so far on this channel and uh, today we are doing the Sydney Football Club. Now this one is a, uh, an interesting one because they're is a few veterans that might be not on the list anymore in three years time. I will say as an aside, it's a little bit trickier to forecast retirements at Sydney because off the top of my head, it feels like players do play a little bit longer there. Nonetheless, uh, the point of this exercise is to try and map out uh, what the team might look like in three years for a start, what some weaknesses they might have in the sense that you know they might have strengths now, but when retirements hit, it might look like a different story. Again, the point of this is not a prediction, it's more to analyze, you know, what the future might look like and how they can potentially make moves now to, um, you know, potentially plug any holes or uh, turn weaknesses into strengths or whatever the case may be. You may or may not have seen, I've just completed another video series where I've gone through each of the 18 clubs, plotted out their best 22, looked at immediate depth and forecast 2024. And this one is going to be a different exercise altogether. But it means I have done a Sydney Swans one. If you want to go find that, I will probably put a link to it in this video, actually. Before I get into it, if you don't mind, consider subscribing to the channel. I am inching closer and closer to hitting 25,000 subscribers, thanks to you guys, and uh, I would love to hit it by the start of the new year. So if you are enjoying the content and want to see more footy and some cricket content as well during the off season, uh, this is the place to subscribe, so I'll really appreciate it. Okay, so to start this exercise, looking at the uh, Sydney Swans this time, uh, what we're going to do is probably go through, and what I've previously done is go through and look at the players that are likely not to be on the list anymore. So I've already done their best 22 for now, at least the one in my opinion, and now I'm going to eliminate some players that really shouldn't be on the list in three years' time. Specifically, the ages of round one 2027 is what I've gone off. And so Sam Reid at 37, I'm going to rule him out. Dane Rampey, 36. Luke Parker, 34. Joel Hamling, uh, 33, as will be Robbie Fox and Jake Lloyd. Taylor Adams, I'm a little bit unsure about at 33. Harry Cunningham, 33. These are players I'm leaving out of this video, or at least the best 22. Again, could Taylor Adams play, you know, into the year he turns 34 as, you know, Luke Parker in the year he turns 35? Um, maybe, maybe. Same thing with Jake Lloyd. I, I, you get that vibe from Sydney. However... For the, you know, I could have just done a conservative one, included all these players, but it wouldn't really have the same value. I think the point of this is to look at what's coming up underneath and give you my opinion on how that transition might go. So with that in mind, I will nominate some players that will be 30 or turning 30 that year uh, that I'm keeping on the list. One of them is Brody Grundy at 32. General rule, Ruckman can probably play a little bit later. And uh, I'm actually not sure what, what year his contract end, ends anyway at Sydney, but 32, I've kept him on the list. Heaney and Papley will turn 30 that year, or will be 30 by round one. Melican will be 30, Callum Mills will be 29, and Aaron Francis will be 29. So just making it clear, those guys are going to still be available on this list. So with that all in mind, I've had a crack at their best 22 three years from now. Okay, here it is on the screen. Now, uh, I know there's some of you that watch you know, all of these videos, and there's probably some of you that just tune into your club's video, in which case I feel the need to explain what the colors mean and what the numbers mean every time I do this. So uh, obviously you can see it's shaped like a best 22. Uh, green indicates my confidence in which they are likely to be best 22 three years from now. Yellow just indicates there's a little bit of uh, subjectivity to it, or I'm just not too sure. Um, I wouldn't get too attached to the colors, Sometimes, you know, it's hard to be consistent across the board and it doesn't really matter for this exercise, but I've decided to do it as a helpful aid to myself. Now, the numbers are ages. The first number is the age. The second number is how many games likely they have to, uh, to have played uh, in three years from now. My general logic for this, if, uh, if a player is pretty locked in 20, best 22 currently, and I expect them to stay that way, then I've added about 20 games per season, uh, allowing for injury and suspension. Um, so, you know, if somebody's best 22, like a um, Braden Campbell, for instance, or a Tom Papley, you know, I've just added 60 games. And then I've tried to be a little bit tighter with some of the other ones, like uh, Caden Cleary, I gave him about 40 games. Maybe that's generous. Same thing with Sheldrick, because I'm just not too sure. But wouldn't get too caught up in that again. What we're trying to look at is how likely, to, how likely is this team to be experienced and ready for finals in three years from now. And Sydney are an interesting one as well because they're currently in contention, or at least, yeah, I, I would say they are. Obviously, just lost the grand final in 22 and then uh, came eighth in 23. I'd say they're still around the mark for finals and top four potentially as well. Um, so 
this is the 22 I've gone with. And when I say 22, I really mean 24. I've done that with all the clubs and I am going to, uh, I, I figure it just, it's helpful to map out a few extra names to see what the depth is going to be like so let's start with the top to bottom. Now that halfback line I'm pretty happy with because there's Florent, there's Tom McCartan, and there's Nick Blakey. Uh, in particular, Nick Blakey is an absolute star. So those guys are, you know, is likely to be their halfback line in three years. The fullback line there, this was tricky. And I'll, I'll point out that the most contentious one here is probably Harry Arnold. So Lewis Melikan is probably their next best available based on the fact that Hamling is not there. That doesn't mean, obviously, that they can't recruit anyone. I realize that. There is a big weakness to this in the sense that they can't forecast trades or even the draft. Um, but, you know, it's not really it's not really meant to be a prediction. So let's say Melikan is their best available key back there. Um, and then the, the other one was hard to divide between... Um, they've got a few other, you know, rookie prospects or 18-year-olds. There's Patrick Snell, who they just drafted. There's Will Edwards as a rookie. I think he's a Cat B rookie. And there's Joel Cochran, who's going to be likely drafted this year to the Sydney Swans that are all tall defenders and could potentially be there before Harry Arnold. So the only reason I chose Harry Arnold is because he was a mid-season pickup that is uh, mature, physically mature. So at 27, is he the best place to be there? It could be Joel Cochran. It could be another key back in the competition. I'm not too sure, but uh, that was the one that was, you know, had me scratching my head. And Francis was probably the best available halfback that I could find. So let's move through the midfield, and this is absolutely a, a, peri- a spot of strength for them because of the young mids that they have. Braden Campbell, what was he picked five or six a couple of years ago, 2020, I think it was. Uh, Callum Mills and Errol Goulden, those guys as a centre line. Uh, it stacks up and you project how good Goulden could be in three years. You know, he's already a gun. And Braden Campbell, I think, has some really top-end potential there. Chad Warner, again, we've seen some top-end form from him. Um, you can project that he would be a good midfielder with 120 games experience by the time he's 25. And Roy Bottom, I still have as a best uh, starting 18 midfielder by then. But of course, you know, we don't know who's going to improve and overtake him. The forward line's interesting. Am I a little bit harsh putting Amati? In yellow, uh, I just it was hard to split between McDonald. I think McDonald, being a top end prospect, I think he, he, he kicked more goals last year, thirty two from twenty, whereas I think a Marty kicked uh, twenty from fifteen, just a slightly more of a sure thing. But uh, you know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm a big Logan McDonald fan. But I'm still pretty confident that a Marty's going to be there unless they trade an absolute star in. In which case, I think they're more likely to keep McDonald. Heaney will still be there. Papley, Haywood, and Hayden McLean. You know, Hayden McLean ticks the box of being. Uh, a ruck forward uh, who's productive you know he rucks he kicks goals could they improve uh, by getting someone else maybe but I think um, you know maybe maybe he could be yellow but I think he's a decent player then there's the bench and it's full of a few options where you know we don't really know how these players are going to turn out I'm obviously a fan of Sheldrick Uh, Caden Cleary looks like a decent prospect uh, but again if if he hasn't played a game if Sheldrick's played nine games I'm going to keep him in yellow for now Constanti is another one who hasn't played a game although top 20 pick in 2021 I think it was Uh, Justin McInerney as well you know maybe he should be green that's not really my take I think uh, it's liable as to whether he's there because they could easily unearth better wingmen or midfielders James Jordan again as well, you know, not not a certain to be to be best twenty four in three years from now. And then Sam Wicks as a pressure forward. So in terms of the players that I've left out there, I talked about the three talls down the back. Uh, Cooper Vickery as well, I don't know anything about. Uh, you know, I think he's drafted as a defender. I know that he was part of Hawthorne's NGA. If I'm thinking of the right guy, but to be honest, I'd be lying if I said I knew too much about him. But nonetheless, he's probably a depth. Uh, you know, defensive option, medium defensive option. Could he be there instead of Francis? Sure. Um, Peter Laddams will still technically be on the list. Will Green will be 21, probably still a little bit early to be best 22 ruck. You've got Corey Warner. You've got Lockie McAndrew, another developing ruck. Again, I just can't really project how these players are going to go. But it is kind of good that they've got depth of midfield options. You know, Matthew Roberts, Caleb Mitchell, Jaden Magor, I think it is. And then they've just capped B rookie Indy Kirk as well. So again, I'd be lying if I said I know too much about him. I do remember Roberts from his draft year, but I don't think they get into the best 24 here. Um, currently, but uh, you know, uh, who knows? In terms of another, you know, key forward option that's in their reserves, I know Jack Buller was some that, someone that they drafted, I think, from Claremont. I think he's from Western Australia, isn't he? Uh, as a mature age pickup in the mid season draft not too long ago. I think it was the most recent one. Sorry, going off a little bit of memory there in terms of the detail, uh, but you know, maybe he could overtake Amati. I, I don't think that will be the case, um, but that is mapping out their depth. So, probably a little bit of a shortage of like small forward to medium forward options. You know, their best six there is very good. 
But outside of that, I think it's just Sam Wicks. You know, Jaden Magor, I think, is a midfielder forward. Again, I've never seen the guy play. So maybe he is a genuine forward prospect for them. But that is probably, regardless of whether you include him as a forward or not, there's not a lot of young forwards on the list. So maybe that's where their attention goes next. In terms of the key back situation, look, they've got young developing tall backs. There's, there's a few of them. There's a handful of them, for sure. Probably more than I realized when I did my original video on them. Having said that, though, with Sydney in their current, you know, era of contention, and I presume their goal is to stay perennially competitive, as we have generally expected from Sydney since I've been watching football, then recruiting probably a best 22 key back that is, you know, with respect to Joel Hamlin, for a start, going to be around longer and going to be, you know, a higher level of talent. That's where it starts. But the midfield is sweet. That midfield is going to be firing all cylinders in three years. Um, regardless of a couple of retirements to Adams and Parker, I think the, the quality is already there. The forward line is still dangerous. It'd be a case of maybe just looking to draft a backfield of those guys. But overall, that's still a very strong 22. And I'd be surprised if in three years, Sydney are still not like well and truly in contention, allowing for the fact that they can trade and draft to improve this 22 even further. But Anyway, guys, that is my take on the Sydney Swans in three years. Again, this is a bit of a punt. It's an outsider looking in. I'd be lying if I said I knew absolutely everything about every prospect on their list. But then again, this is part of this is for a learning experience for me as well. And I am uh, keen to hear what you have in the comments for me as to things that I might have slightly misunderstood, gotten wrong. Um, but nonetheless, I hope this was a helpful exercise. And at the end of the day, it was also a bit of fun. So uh, thank you for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Recommend it to a friend. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.